Hi! Today is March 8th and we are continuing to walk through the Bible, reading the One Year Bible New Living Translation. We're answering the questions, who am I, who is God, and what the heck are we doing together? We're referring to Numbers chapter 10 verse 1 to chapter 11 verse 23, Mark chapter 14 1 through 21, Psalm 51 1 through 19, Proverbs chapter 10, 31 and 32. And we are continuing to find the answers to, to those questions. And in Numbers chapter 10, the first thing that we read in verse 1 is, Now the Lord said to Moses, and it made me think about God speaking, but Moses has to hear. So the relationship that Moses and God had is that God spoke, Moses heard. And when he heard, he obeyed. Over and over and over again, the Bible says that Moses did as the Lord had commanded, but they talked face to face and they spent a lot of time together. And his, you know, when Moses came down from the mountain after spending 40 days and 40 nights with God, his face was radiant. He, it just changed everything about him. And so we want to, you know, we want to hear God when he speaks. And he speaks through his word. He speaks through his spirit, through people, uh, by the Holy Spirit, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Sometimes he speaks in creation. You know, the Bible says, I believe it's in a psalm that, that the, uh, you know, the trees clap their hands and praise. You know, when we look at the stars, we see God. When we look at the sun coming up in the morning and going down at night, God says, remember my covenant, remember my promise with you. He said, it, it's more, there's more of an opportunity for the suns to stop rising and the sun to stop setting than there is for me to break my promise. So God speaks, we want to listen. And God is a God of order and it talks about all kinds of things to keep in order. There's a trumpet. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, there's a signal to follow. And then it says, when you arrive, this is verse 9, when you arrive in your own land and go to war against your enemies who attack you, sound the alarm with the trumpets. Then the Lord will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. He's going to remember you and rescue you from your enemies. Blow the trumpets in times of gladness, too, sounding them at your annual festivals. And then uh, skip down to the end of verse 10. The trumpets will remind the Lord, your God, of his covenant with you. I am the Lord, your God. So he's going to use the trumpets to help Israel remember and help God to remember. Uh God will rescue, so remember, rescue, and remind. It'll remind God, and it says, I am the Lord your God. And then, again, there's more instructions to keep Israel in order. It was the way that uh, they carried the objects of the tabernacle when they, when the cloud moved, and it, it uh, directed them and guided them to, to break camp and go somewhere else. 28, this was the order in which the Israelites marched. Division, division. Again, God is a God of order, and he wants to put, wants us to put our lives in order. He wants to help us to put our lives in order. He has the power. His hand is not short, and his Holy Spirit is powerful. His word is true, and it gives us what we need to put our lives in order. And verse 33, they marched for three days after leaving the mountain of the Lord with the Ark of the Lord's Covenant moving ahead of them to show them where to go. Now, earlier, Moses had asked his brother-in-law to come. This is back in verse 29. He says, uh, we are on our way to the place the Lord promised for us. And he said, I, for he said, I will give it to you. Come with us and we will treat you well for the Lord has promised wonderful blessings for Israel. But Ho Obab replied, no, I will not go. I must return to my own land and family. 
Verse 31, please don't leave us, Moses pleaded. You know the places in the wilderness where we should camp. Come, be our guide. If you do, we'll share with you all the blessings the Lord gives us. Now, I wondered why he asked this man, even if it was his brother-in-law, to come and be a guide when the Lord was guiding them. So it just kind of makes me pause and think, hmm, I wonder what Moses was thinking. And then it says, uh, I'm going to repeat this first, the Ark of the Lord's Covenant moving ahead of them to show them where to stop and rest. As they moved on each day, the cloud of the Lord hovered over them. And whenever the ark set out, Mo Moses would shout, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Let them flee before you. And when the ark was set down, he would say, Return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. And then in chapter 11, it, there's an account of the Israelites starting to complain. They complained about their hardship. They complained about the manna. They, and the Lord was angry. He was, he was very angry and his anger blazed against them and he sent a fire to rage among them. And he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people screamed to Moses for help. And when he prayed to the Lord, the fire stopped. And then, uh, verse 4, the foreign rabble who were traveling with the Israelites began to crave the good things of Egypt. And the people of Israel also began to complain. Complaining is not a good idea. Not a good plan. There's the scripture, I believe it's in Philippians, that says, Do everything without arguing or complaining. Uh, if we just concentrated on that, we, we would change the world. Verse 10, Moses heard all the family standing in the doorways of their tents whining, and the Lord became extremely angry. Moses was also very aggravated. And Moses said to the Lord, why are you treating me, your servant, so harshly? Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? And then he says, did I give birth to them? So we look at God and we see him emotional. He created us in his image, Genesis 1, We're emotional and he's emotional too. Uh, Ephesians 4, 26 says, In your anger do not sin and do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. Verse 27 says, And don't give the devil a foothold. And you know, to be angry is not a sin, but to keep it overnight and turn it into bitterness or to do something immoral with anger and or have it turn into hatred, it is, that is a sin because he, Ephesians 4, 26 says, don't keep it overnight. Well, God has emotions too, and he is angry with these people. He has shown them great, great miracles. And he's shown himself to be true. He's shown himself to be, to be powerful. And he's shown himself to be victor over Egypt, their enemy. And they want to go back? I don't know. It, we, it's just, you know, we and we can sit in our pious, lofty places and kind of look down on Israel. But I have to look in the mirror and admit that I do the same. So... It's a reminder for us not to do this and to be thankful. As the psalm said yesterday, a thanksgiving, a sacrifice of thanksgiving, a praise um, to our God. So verse 16, God has, has a plan. Moses is tired and he's saying to God, why did you make me responsible for all these people? And then, six, then the Lord said to Moses, gather before me 70 men who are recognized as elders and leaders of Israel, bring them to the tabernacle to stand there with you. I will come, that's that four letter word, and I will come down and talk to you there. I will take some of the spirit, Holy Spirit, capital S, that is upon you, and I will put the spirit upon them also. They will bear the burden of the people along with you, so you will not have to carry it along, alone. Verse 18, and say to the people, purify yourselves for tomorrow. You're going to have meat to eat. And they had meat to eat for a month and they got sick on it. And there was a plague 
And uh, God, you know, Moses said, how can this be? You know, before he saw it and God was saying, you're going to have enough meat to eat for a month. And he said, there's 600,000 foot soldiers here with me. And yet you say, I will give you, I will give them meat for a whole month. And then he asked, how, how are you going to do that? And he, he just says it, you know, like, are you going to, well, he just says, how are you going to do that? Those are my words. Verse 23, then the Lord said to Moses, has my arm lost its power? Dear God, has God's arm lost its power? He's the same God today as he was in the time that the scripture was written. He is the same. He has the same power. He's the same size. He's the same heart. He's got the same character. And he says, has my arm lost its power? Now you will see whether or not my word comes true. And in, and it, we're going to go right straight to Mark chapter 14. And Jesus said that the testimony that he had and the testimony that what he said was true was the signs and the miracles and the wonders that followed him. Now, it was Passover day. It was Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. And the leading priests and teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. And uh, meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. When he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you and you can help them whenever you want to but you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelves, went to the leading priests to arrange to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted when they heard why he had come, that four-letter word, come. I, I often imagine that maybe Judas was there and he was rebuked by Jesus and he got mad for whatever reason, but uh, he had it in his heart to betray Jesus and he took the steps to do that. The Passover meal was, uh, there was a place prepared for Jesus. Jesus told the disciples where to go and how to do it. And then he's sitting at the Passover table and he says, I tell you the truth, one of you eating here with me will betray me. And greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, am I the one? And uh, we can ask ourselves, am I the one? Are we the one that are betraying Jesus? And uh, now Judas already knew that he was planning on betraying. So for him to say, oh, am I the one? Um, uh, yeah. So... For the Son of Man must die, as the scriptures declared long ago, but how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better than for that man if he had never been born. So we talk about how God values us and Jesus values us and he loves us and he won't turn us away. And if we ask God to forgive us and we want to seek him, we'll find him. Uh, if, we, if we ask him to forgive us, he'll forgive us. But there is, a, a, there is the other side. You know, God wants us to love him and he wants us to value him and he wants us not to reject him. And there is, you know, there is a consequence for uh, turning our hearts away from such a great gift that God has given to us. So let's accept God, accept Christ and his plan today. Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God. And there's so much and I've run out of time. Please, please, please read it for yourself. Proverbs, the mouth of the godly person gives wise advice, but the tongue that deceives will be cut off.
So have an absolutely blessed day. Share these videos so that the word of God may be heard.